All right, welcome back to The Existential Way. This is the new year, and, and today I really want to go a little deeper into the projections that I've had, talking about, once again, subconsciously guilting others and really just kind of get in depth. Now, sometimes, yesterday, in, in yesterday's projections, I really did not talk about the finer details, you know, uh, of subtly uh, guilting others. Um, subconsciously, so you know this can this can happen among partners, husbands, uh, wives, um, your loved ones, friends, family, co-workers, acquaintances, girlfriends, boyfriends. But I think with this year, we really have to turn everything upside down in order that it can actually be seen as right side up. As Kierkegaard says, it's so hard to believe because it's so hard to obey. And sometimes when we have tried to will, thing, will things into life, into action, into existence, and it's just by sheer will of personal force without any cognizance to the true patience that, that is involved when decision making, when taking actions, and when and even when assisting others, this is what can lead us down the road to ultimately being unfulfilled and being in the state of subconsciously guilting others. And so, in applying this to, to moving through this year, I want you to think of it like this, because I've really been thinking about this for myself, is if you want to help the world, you're going to help yourself. You know, and sometimes... You may not even know how to do that because you, you haven't really taken a good look at the, the pre-existence, the preconditions that have been set upon your life by the evil one up to this point. And so, in terms of stepping out, I want to move along the lines of really work as if you're seeking out that last lost sheep of Israel, that that person. It's it, It's like... My intent and my purpose is to is to is to treat those that I'm that I'm teaching, and I and, and I'm, I really want to be focused on teaching this year, and and really gaining personal insights from it to to help myself. But this idea of instead of trying to just assume that the world needs help, I'm really going to try to look to strive with another person, as if I'm looking, and, and when I'm assisting that last, every last person, I'm treating that individual as if that individual essentially is like the center of my universe. Um, I want to strive with that person. I'm, I'm, I've, I've come to look for the last of the lost sheep of Israel. Like the Bible says, you know, sometimes the shepherd, he's, he might leave the 99 others behind and go get that one that was lost so it can be found again. And that's really, I really believe this will help you is the relationship you have is, is how personally, uh, how, how, pers how do you strive with the relationship personally? Is it a relationship solely built on uh, just the superficial conscious uh, uh, existence of who you are? It's a chat, it's a hi, hello, or is there deeper content to it? Is there... Is there a real meaning behind the relationship? Do you belong in it? Uh, should you be assisting this person? Does the person even need help? To, what kind of relationship is this? And really examining your premise for helping that, la that last one, that one that you want to strive for this year, instead of going out and trying to help the world. Um, I really feel like the world will be better off if you, if you really seek to strive with one person this year. You know, and this will... I really believe when you step out in this way, it, it, it's it's like you're you're not giving the world away all your power, but you're making 100% of the investment of your energy in knowing where it's going, in knowing, and you will know right away if you're looking into the subconscious relation, into the subconscious relation with another, if it's being reciprocated back. See, these are identifiers, the back and forth that's going on and so that's kind of my premise in going deeper is, is finding 
that person. Now, so, now you know, a, a lot of the times you might reach out and, and you're not going to get any reciprocation. And, you know, that's, you know, there might be, you might really take a hard, conceited effort to go reach out and, and, and there won't be, there won't be any, uh, you know, reciprocity back to you. That's fine. You know, like the scriptures say, if, you know, shake the dust off your sandals, and I got a good, I'm really thinking about someone I've been messaging who's a TI who's just been there for me, you know, um, through email. I won't mention this person's name, but uh, just a, a godly example, okay, of a person. So, shake the dust off of your sandals and continue your blessing, continue it on, move it on. So, um, look, not not everyone's going to be where you are in terms of the teaching and the, and and the the existence and the and the resonance of the Holy Spirit exactly. You know. So, like I say, I just don't take my blessing away from somebody because uh, they're doing their thing and I'm doing mine. I just carry my blessing on through. And, and really, it, it, it's this understanding when you're uh, when you understand the greater realization of the world, the greater realization of your purpose for your life. That's when you become all inclusive. But you know who you are, and so you know when you're. And this is another thing I want to talk about. Another little in-depth thing is this idea of suffering because when you're a true follower of Christ the suffering is going to come to you at some point in time you will have to make up some things of your past and they will be shown to you and you may suffer for them you may also suffer for the faith uh, you may also suffer for righteousness sake you may suffer because you're standing out you may even suffer because of your sin issues. Now, I'm working through all of these, so I understand, uh, and maybe not so, that I'm suffering for something. In this. And, and, and like the scriptures say, it usually is the umbrella of, of it's under the umbrella of suffering for, for being a believer in Christ. And so if you're a true believer, the rejoice and the struggle is the fact that you will suffer but the, the, the real joy about it is how will you take upon that suffering? How will you apply it to the cross that you're carrying? Are you going to try to avoid it this year? And this is really what I don't want to do, at least for myself, is don't be a play, in a place or get yourself in a place of avoidance because that will get you off track. The suffering is a place to grow impatiently. Or it's to grow patiently, not impatiently, patiently. It's a place of endurance, a place that you want to remain focused on. And see, this is why I'm kind of not, uh, I'm, I'm not going to attempt to move to give my energy to this realm of the new age because all it's doing is taking. It's a taker. It's not, uh, it's not, it doesn't receive, it, you're not going to receive from that anything, spir anything of spiritual fruition. So you have to understand that you're going to endure with the patience of the saints or as a patient of a saint as well. This is the sign of a believer. So how will you change the way you look at your targeting this year if you're a chosen TI? This is very important. Okay. Now these, these previous two that I've mentioned subconsciously, working through the process of changing oneself from the inside out. Now, when you're conscious, when you're projecting positive vibes from a state of, of, of perfect union with subconscious, and, and you're really who you are from the core, you're going to be able to see that those without a core are usually those without a conscience. Those, those subconsciouses of the world, those perps, those gang stalkers, they don't have... You're going to see right through the conscious... There's no conscious projection of any positive vibe because that... The mind, the outer awareness is gone. So what you're looking at, you know, as if the eyes were the window to the soul and you see there's no life in there, what you're looking at is a subconscious 
which has been taken over. There's no soul essence. There's no human essence. And so the subconscious is really this apparatus that has been taken over by a demon or a spirit. And this is where you have to really choose your battles wisely. Is can you help something that's twice dead? And if there's somebody that comes to you and really is is departmentalized or or you know has two personalities and is still hanging on for some kind of help and you're able to help that person you know commit to a a a, a better state of oneness and you want to and you have the capacity to cast out demons now i've been a part of of, of removing spirits from people before um but I'm really talking about the state of those who are unchosen and can never be saved. And this is this twice dead in this dimension while they're walking, while they're still existing. And this is, you got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them kind of deal. And this is why it's important. If someone's totally in the state of, of chosen, unchosen, uh, subconscious where it's taken over and you and you see that um this is a battle that it's just going to be a, a battle of belief it's going to be you're you're not going to be battling a, a, a person you're going to be just it's going to be a dead end in this measure they're 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 gone this is the kingdom versus versus the the carnal collective if you will it's it's you know bodies are piling up right now this is what I'm getting at. So know your know that some some you're not you're, you're not going to be able to get through at all. They're not gonna they're not gonna change going into this year and going into the ne next year. These are the unchosen spiritually. These are the unchosen subconsciously. They've been the those souls have been removed. the The essence the uh, of of their being is now fully given over to Satan. So and and, and choose your battles wisely this year. Um, know that when I'm talking about who you're going to strive for, you know, commit to personally striving with those who are, who are suffering and know that they're suffering for the cause of Christ and for God. And you'll know your place. You'll know your place automatically with these people. They, they may be burdened by spirits. They, they're, they may be extremely poor, homeless, and, and they, they may be targeted individuals as well, just like yourself, just like myself. So, these are people we're going to want to better leave, uh, you know, no work unfinished this year. Really, with resolve, continue it until um, you make it a black and white, a yes and a no, you know, uh, situation. And this is really kind of giving me this perspective yesterday is, is in your decision making, sometimes you have to be less emotional. In your, in your humanity, in your human being... I believe it's very important to be emotionally expressive. Very important to be emotionally expressive in your existence. Not always in your behavior towards others, but in your elation for exi existing in life, in the generality thereof. Now, the other thing is, is a lot of the times, it's not that we're shutting down. It's, it's because we're coming up against spirits when we, when we meet individuals. We meet people with odd spirits, we meet people with a lot of preconditions set upon their life and, and, and they haven't given to the, the existential crisis, the spiritual crisis, the greater realization for the need of per the, the person of Jesus in their life and the leap of faith into eternal existence. So, I'm, I'm certainly very elated about life in, in, in my general daily life. I, I'm enthused about the pursuit of the Holy Spirit and the things thereof of the kingdom on high. But, this will be the season of, of where you're going to express that your yes is going to mean yes, and your no is going to mean no. That's it. What's black is black, what's white is white. There's going to have to be clear boundaries, and there's not, gonna have, there's not going to be the need for a much ex, a, ex, a emotional expression in explaining why. And this is, the, this is the problem. This world, it functions on, on, on this social drama that it wants to get people entangled in. And most people are entangled in this narcissistic, Jezebel eunuch style of existing. And I believe for, for the chosen, though, uh, we want to be obedient to God. We want to be stewards of His Word. But 
we want to show that people can have the human essence and have a soul witness to those before them. But we have to be in command of our vessel. We have to be uh, in command of the respect that God that God deserves. So make your yes be yes and your no be no, and don't explain yourself to it. A lot of people. This world wants. A, oh, they want to hate you. Oh, you didn't show up to a family reunion. Why didn't you show up? It's okay if that that other non-believer didn't show up, but you're a believer. We you were supposed to be here, so we can gang stalk you. <laughs> you know this is this is what I'm talking about. Is you know, or you're having you keep having problems with this coworker, or you keep subtly using. You're, you're subconsciously guilt tripping your partner or vice versa and you're getting this you're getting this scheming this gaslighting this you know um, that's when it's time to to pack up your bags um, personally speaking um, spiritually speaking and keep to the things of the Holy Spirit in general about your existence and not try to commit see some people are beyond that help though too you're you're going to be confronting people these odd spirits and they they want to leech the energy off of you but they're really never the person themselves the vessel thereof is the the intent is never to be changed it's fully enacted into the life that's been given to satan already so that's why it's important to be obedient to be a good steward of god's word and and yes we are filled with the life of a of, of complete human beings a complete soul witness, a complete soul essence. But how we purvey that to per to other persons is is going to be important this year. Stand stand your ground this year. Stand your ground. That's important. Um, you know. But don't be a narcissist. Don't you know? When I say stand your ground, I mean stand your ground spiritually, because this is a spiritual war. Now, obviously, you know, don't get yourself into trouble. Um, physically, no physical altercations, but stand your ground spiritually, and, and if you have to tell someone no, that's it, you know. Uh, moving on, uh, that I guess that would conclude kind of the part of spiritual discernment, is, is you will become a better spiritual discerner of who you're dealing with, you know. And sometimes you want to reach out with so much love and, and, and someone may misconstrue that the wrong way, which is, it, it happens all the time because people don't, how much are they invested in knowing themselves and when they really know the place that they're coming from and, 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 how, and how that core is committed to a solid subconscious in order to drive a true conscious awareness in our Lord. Um, if we become better discerners of the Spirit, we will be able to see this. We will, we will know what battles to choose. We will know who our crowd is, who, who our, what our area of, of, of gift is, you know, this year. Um, and it all goes hand, hand in hand. It's cyclical. I mean, these things support one another. Just like Scripture supports Scripture, you're going to understand this for yourself this year. Okay, so work, let, let's talk about this. Um, okay, so let's... If we're going to be consciously projecting positives... We're going to be of our true natures. We have to check our subconscious states, our core, um, and they really understand the examination, including the non-escapist attitude of the of this new age to want to f have a feel-good contest of, of how you think you can save yourself. I want to get beyond this. This is not m the plan for my life. Is I cannot do this. That's not my. That's not God's will for my life. I don't want to spend. Uh, so much of the false sense in trying to um, justify true self. I don't want to do that. Um, now it's my. Now I want to. I want to reach out and really reach out as if I'm once again reaching out to the last of the lost sheep of Israel. Everyone that I come in contact with, um, I, I be that love and light. I don't be. I, do, I I don't want to be someone. And I've come across a few of these people, where. Uh, I, I come at them with a with a time is money kind of attitude, because that's really uh, uh, that's part of this new age. Is if I if I can't get something from you respectively, then um, the time you know my time is money kind of attitude is really a concept that belongs to those with the Jezebel spirit and the and the and the spirit of the eunuch in males as well. So I, I'm talking about the eunuchs of this world, not the eunuchs that castrate themselves spiritually you know, to the life of God. So, 
yes, I don't want to be around people. And, and, and that's why I'm really working on, I'm just going to cut, you know, advertising and leave comments open this year. And I, I really feel, the rest I'll just leave it. You'll know it by, you know, I'm just going to cut that because it's, you know, I really want to focus on being personal to humanity and being, and just even, I don't want to, I don't want to leave anything undone that, um, has remained. I want to do everything the opposite now. I want to fulfill, um, the aspirations of, of turning my duality, um, not only inward, but exemplified by my outward actions to complete the whole oneness uh, of existing the faith, being the faith, acting powerfully in the faith. And so this will all, this will create a, a true spiritual fruition in your life. And you might not see these things come about physically, materially, but you will be better for it. You will grow and these things won't be able to be taken away from you. You won't be deceived. You won't give your energy away to the world, but you'll you'll give it right back to God. And and it will be fortified by the will of God in your life and the Holy Spirit. You know, the testimony of the Spirit in your life. So that's where I'm at right now is is turning who you are inside out. Uh, let's turn the world upside down this year, guys, so that we c that the true existence of it can be envisioned for your life can be of true resolve for what you stand for so um, identify your conscious with your subconscious um, leave no work undone bring that um, resolve continue the resolve into some form of goal this year in which you know that it needs to be accomplished and uh, be a better spiritual discerner of where you're giving your who you're giving your power to and and if you're giving your power away to the world or not and, and you everything will work itself out for you you know especially for us chosen TIs we don't need to be dealing with gang stalkers on a personal level we really don't we don't have to look at them talk to them ignore them they're they're already gone they're far gone so that's not the premise the premise is this year is helping your own helping Israel um, residing with the one in need, you know, striving with the one. If you can be a better partner to your to your your husband or your wife, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, your co-workers, um, your acquaintances, this is the act of changing the world. You change one, you know. Be the, first off, be the change that you want to see. Second of all, enact the change you want to see with the same patience and striving. Uh, with that one who who might be quietly calling calling out or calling calling it out for your assistance for your help to the same measure in their lives and and you will see the world changed you know but first you got to be it you got to change the whole perspective about yourself this year that's the important thing is for me some things have not been working so for me some things are get those some things that are not working are getting cut this year. That's just it. So, um, but it does take your part, you know, because God didn't create robots. Satan does, but God doesn't. He creates human beings that live that live forever. So, guys, until the next one, go to the existential way. Um, fall in love this year, you know. Fall in love with Jesus Christ with Yeshua this year. Fall in love with life. Fall in love with um, everything that resonates and has been imparted as God's eternal creation. Fall in love with the possibility. Um, just don't forget who you are in the process and how important it is for you to be 100% vested in, in existence of this examination and you will do well by that of God. He will bring you out of every form of suffering. And don't please don't avoid the proper understanding of rejoice by trying to be blindly led by the new age that there is no suffering and that you're going to save yourself in this kind of deal and you're going to be this 
you're going to project this conscious love when really it's it, it's a it's 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 a subconscious guilt tripping if you don't do what this false entity this false person says this false self says that you should do if you want to be part of this group or this structure no that's not what it's about don't follow me get in touch with god what does he want for you get in touch with yourself don't leave yourself out of the process this year this is why the world is so fucked up people just are zombies so guys until the next one i'm gonna let you go because i can ramble on but uh for me, I want to be a better teacher and a better a person of, of reciprocating my own inner dialogue to learn as well.